This is the challenge of the GoBots adventure story number three, titled Conquest of Earth. You can follow along in your book. When you hear the sound of the laser gun, you will know it is time to turn to the next page. In story record number one, titled Battle for Gobatron, we learn that in one of the spiraling arms of the Milky Way, the metallic world of Gobatron is being wrapped by violent revolt. A battle between Leader One and the Guardian Gobots and Psykill and his renegade forces is taking place. In story number two, titled Target Earth, Psykill and the renegades joined forces with a certain Dr. Braxis, a top-ranking NASA official. His secret desire is to overturn NASA's leadership and gain his own control. As story two concluded, a mammoth explosion caused billows of ice and snow to envelop Psycho, Zod, and the renegade forces. What Leader One and the Guardians failed to realize was that Psycho, in his cunning wisdom, has found a way to escape from the chilling depths to once again further his plan of world dominion and the conquest of Gobatron. Now, as we begin story three, Psycho speaks. Copter, set the coordinates for Cheyenne Mountain, Colorado, where we will meet Dr. Braxis. From there, I will seize control of the entire planet. Will we be needing Zod? I'm programming him to follow by sea. Leader One, Turbo, and Matt Hunter aboard the command center are racked by worry due to the fact that AJ, Dr. Turganova, and Scooter have not been heard from since the explosion. The command center moves across the terrain where the last communication was transmitted. Leader One does not realize that his friends are wedged securely in an arctic force field deep below the ice and snow, desperately trying to contact the command center for help. It's caving in, Scooter. Hang on, AJ. I've just succeeded in fixing our signal generator and will attempt to contact the command center. Help! Someone, please, help! Aboard the command center, Leader One alertly has picked up the faint signal being sent by his trapped friends. The sensors coordinate the exact location, and soon they hover directly over the disabled wreckage containing their friends. Activate the corkscrew laser drill, Turbo. We have got to get them out before they're crushed by that ice mass. The corkscrew beam burrows deep into the icy avalanche site, enveloping the entire wreckage with a huge protective bubble which transports them and the wreckage through the drilled tunnel and up toward the huge command center. It looks like we found you in the nick of time. Are you all right? Yes, thanks to you. We're all together now and, and everyone is accounted for. Yes, Scooter. Now our mission is to track the location of the renegades and alert NASA as to the possible dangers of an attack. Leader One, our sensors indicate that a huge mass has been tracked and is heading for a location somewhere near Cheyenne Mountain, Colorado. Hey, that's the location of our North American Air Defense Command. All communication satellites and defense systems are operated from NORAD. But Matt, Cheyenne Mountain is virtually impossible to force your way into. You don't think Psykill... AJ, you seem to underestimate Psykill's cunning ways. We must not take any chances. Can you lead us to this place, Matt? You bet. Then we must depart at once. It is late at night by the time Psykill and the renegades arrive at the NORAD location in Colorado. The trees are silhouetted against the light of a full moon. Inside their spaceship, Dr. Braxis is putting the finishing touches on his pulsar detonation device, using the Saurium as the deadly power force. The Saurium is in place, Psykill! Excellent. Once we interface with the satellite transmitters inside, I'll engulf and control the entire world in my web. <laughs> Our web, Psykill, old partner. <laughs> Our web. <laughs> You'll get yours, Doctor, after you've entered the base and opened the gates for us. Me? <laughs> Why me? Because you have military clearance, Praxis. But, but Psykill, I'll need help breaking into their security control center. I'll give you help, little man. Doctor, activate the astrobeam. We'll bring Jeeper Creeper down to assist the good Doctor. 
Operating the controls of the Astro Beam, Psykill and Copter summon Jeeper Creeper, a hulking army green gobot with glowing eyes. Jeeper Creeper is able to change into a rough, tough army jeep. Oh, perfect! I should have no trouble gaining entry driving this fellow. Meanwhile, high over the western United States, Leader One, in the command center, glides through the night sky. He is determined to find out what the evil Gobots are planning. There is no question about it. We picked up something on our scanner a short distance from the NORAD coordinate point. But how do you suppose they hope to get in there, Matt? I've been giving that some thought. Dr. Braxis has clearance for entry, and once inside, he could open up the gates for Psykel and his renegades. How can we stop them? If I could use your communication system to talk to General Lindley inside NORAD, perhaps I could warn him. Of course. Be my guest, Matt. NORAD Control Center, come in, please. This is Matt Hunter speaking. Come in, Matt Hunter. This is NORAD Control Center. Put me in touch with General Lindley at once. This is urgent. Stand by, please. General Lindley here. Where are you, Matt? We've all been trying to track you down. You're in deep trouble with NASA. I know, I know, and I'll turn myself in under one condition. No deals, Hunter. General, you've got to listen to me. I have proof that extraterrestrial forces are about to break into NORAD. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, Matt. You bring yourself in here and we'll have a nice little chat about UFOs, okay? But, General... Dr. Braxis is in on the plot to take over... Over and out, Matt. Can you believe that crackpot hunter of all the nerve? General, security has alerted us that Dr. Braxis is at the main gate and on his way in here to see you. Well, what? Braxis? Here? Oh, no. That guy's a real troublemaker. Please turn to side two for the continuation of the Gobot story. Meanwhile, Braxis and Jeeper Creeper park in the cavernous garage inside Cheyenne Mountain. Jeeper Creeper converts into his robotic form. They make their way through the concrete corridors until finally Braxis comes to the security sector which controls the various entrances into the NORAD complex. Inside, the security alarm bell screams its warning as Dr. Braxis opens all security gates. Jeeper Creeper paralyzes the various soldiers who come to investigate the intrusion with paralyzing energy beams emitting from his glowing eyes. Braxis calling Psykill. Come in, Psykill. We read you, Braxis. Have you seized the control center? Affirmative. The security forces didn't know what hit them. <laughs> Soldiers run in terror as Copter, Psykill, and the Renegades descend through the gates and into the NORAD center. The soldiers fire laser energy bolts at the intruders, and an all-out battle begins. Wait a minute. What in the world is going on here? If you value the lives of your men, order them to surrender at once. Meanwhile, the Guardian Command Center has landed some distance from the renegade ship. Matt has decided to give himself up to General Lindley in hopes of convincing him of the danger, which, of course, has already happened. I'll have Turbo give you a lift part way, Matt, so that he can stand by in case you need help. Thanks, Leader One, but I'm afraid that I'll have a pretty hard time convincing the General of my story. What will happen to you, Matt? He'll probably toss me in prison. I will go with you, Matt. And help to verify your story. Good idea, Dr. Turganova. On your way now. Back in the NORAD war game situation room, Praxis and Psycho are busy attaching the Saurian Pulsar device to the vast banks of defense computers. Once we have interfaced the Pulsar device to the satellite system, Praxis, our work will nearly be done. I will send my message to the people of Earth through this device. Then I can totally control the minds of the entire planet. <laughs> what was that? What is it, Braxis? It seems we have visitors, Psykill. Matt Hunter and a woman. Hunter? Yes. And he's with the woman scientist. Get them in here. 
As Matt and Dr. Turganova step through the open doors at the base, they are seized by Copter, who brings them into the war games room to Psycho. So now you two can watch as we activate the pulsar generator. This little device emits an electromagnetic signal which will turn all humans into my obedient slaves. Aw, oh, that seems impossible. The science of Gobatron would appear as magic to you earthlings. Ah, we have interface. Yes, my friends. The only way a human can escape the effect of the pulsar is to attach one of these frequency neutralizers to their ear. <laughs> like this. <laughs> As the Pulsar device takes effect, Matt and Dr. Turganova, who still are in the clutches of Coptur, suddenly become glassy-eyed and silent. It's working! It's working! Yes, Praxis, but it won't work on the Guardians, and I don't know where they are. Throughout the base, soldiers and personnel can be seen going through the same transformation as the effects of the Pulsar spreads across the landscape, over the airways, and through the satellite systems in space. Inside the Guardian Command Center, Leader One is anxiously waiting for someone to communicate with him. Meanwhile, Turbo is speeding on his way back toward the Guardian Command Center, not realizing that he has been seen by the renegades and is being followed by them. He calls ahead to speak with Leader One. Come in, Leader One! Something terrible is happening. Our control center has intercepted the communication channel at the NORAD Center. They have Matt and Dr. Turganova, and they've begun activating some kind of mind-controlling pulsar device. This thing is supposed to give them complete control over the mind of the Earthlings. What should we do? Psykill will use the Earthlings against us. We must act quickly. Alert every Guardian available. We will attack Psykill at once. It looks like we're too late. They are attacking us! A terrible battle ensues. The Guardians are fighting not only their dreaded enemy, the Renegades, but now the zombified forces of the Army, Navy, the Marines, and the civil authorities, as the Colorado State Police join forces in the battle. Leader One sees the desperate plight of his forces as they try to hold back the onslaught. Finally, Leader One orders retreat. Guardian forces, retreat! I'll provide firepower cover for you. Escape while you can. We can't leave you here. Turbo, I'm in charge. Now take off, all of you. That is in order. Turbo, Scooter, and the Guardian forces barely escape, while Leader One bravely uses his remaining firepower to keep the renegades distracted. As Leader One tries to escape, he receives a direct energy blast and goes into a tailspin together, crashing into the mountains below in a crumpled, smoldering heap. Psycho views Leader One's downfall on the war game screen from within NORAD headquarters and roars with glee. <laughs> this is the end of story number three. If you wish, please check at your record store for the challenge of the GoBots adventure story titled Earthbound, story number four of this series.